Here's another circuit. Again, there'll be a lot of things we can't figure out here. But let's see, are there any definite numbers that we can figure out? This will be complicated, so let's just try to figure out are there any definite numbers that we know for sure here. Per second are going up the ski lift. There must be 25 skiers per second coming into the ski lift. Good. trying to trap you into figuring out something you couldn't, but it's good that you stopped. These are the only definite numbers that we know. Does this have to be 25 amps? No. No, in fact, it's going to be bigger or smaller than 25 amps. Because only some of the skiers are taking this path. Some of the skiers will take this path. Um, does this have to be, well, does this have to be 30 volts? No. Will it be bigger or smaller than 30 volts? Because we're only losing some of the height over here. We're losing the rest of the height over other portions. So based on what I gave you, these were the only numbers that we could figure out for sure. We couldn't figure out any of the voltages. But we know that all these voltage drops have to be less than 30, because this is the total voltage source. This is seven volts. Does that mean this has to be seven volts? Would this be bigger or smaller than seven volts? Smaller. Good. Very good. Now what can we figure out? Now, what's our analogy for the oh, voltage? Those are, well, we know that B and D are parallel, right? Are they? Not sure. Let's not worry too much about parallel and series. Let's not try to do this with tricks or rules. Let's try to use our intuition. So remember, what, what's our intuition for 8 volts? What, what does that mean in terms of the ski lift analogy? by 8 okay. units of height. Remember that the voltage we're interpreting is the change in height. Mm -hmm. We're interpreting voltage as the change in height. Oh, and so if they go downhill over D by 7 units, they have to go downhill over B and C by 7 units total. Right, good. Good. So that, that's uh, better than I think you're, the first way you were thinking about this. At first I think you were thinking that this plus this has to add up to 8. Yeah. That would be true maybe if this was the battery, uh, but this isn't the battery. Um, instead, Think about a skier who goes from here to here. Well, if they go from here to here, taking this path, they've gone down seven units in height in total. So what's the total amount of height they have to lose going down this path? Seven. Because it's got the same starting and ending points. If you're moving between the same starting and ending points, you have to lo you lose the same total amount of height no matter what path you take. OK, so we're not, we don't want to say that um, these plus this add up to eight. 
In fact, there's really almost no relationship between this voltage. What we want to say is that these two together add up to 7. Okay. By the way, are B and C in parallel? Okay. Remember, what's the definition of parallel? Our technical definition. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say that right. We want to know whether, say, B and D are in parallel. Yeah. And I think they are on top, but not on the bottom, because C is between them. Which means they're not. Yeah. Because in order to be in parallel, there yeah, has to be no interruption between both the top and the bottom. Yeah. Well, there's an uninterrupted path between the tops of these two devices, but between the bottoms, there's an interruption. There's an intermediate device. So B and D are not in parallel. This was what I meant when I said that people often think things are in parallel when they're not. These kind of look like they're in parallel, but they don't meet our technical definition. That's why these don't have to both be 7 volts. Because we did learn earlier that things that are in parallel have to have the same voltage change. But these are not in parallel, so they don't have to have the same voltage change. OK. Um, so that basically we've seen some things we can't figure out so far. But there is one other thing we can figure out. I told you that this was 8 volts. What can we now figure out about E? Now that I've said that there's an 8 volt drop across A, what can we figure out about E? Um, e is 15 volts. Yeah. We know that we gain 30 units of height moving up the ski lift. And then let's think about taking this path back down to the bottom of the ski lift. Well, we would lose 8 units of height here and 7 units of height here. That's 15. That means we have to lose the remaining 15 over here. So that was the thing that, was, that we weren't noticing before. Knowing this allows us to figure out this voltage change. We still can't figure out these individual voltage changes. Let's say this is 4 amps. What can we figure out now? They're both 21 separately. If there's 25 skiers per second coming up to this point, and four skiers per second take the right-hand path, that leaves 21 skiers per second to take the left-hand path. Good. Um, and notice how they both come back together to add up to 25 skiers per second once these two, once these two paths reintegrate. And let's say this is three volts. Now what can we figure out? Uh, let's see, it's four volts. Because, um, again, we know that we lose seven units of height in total going down this way, so we have to lose seven units of height in total going down this way. That would be a good problem to try to go back to do again. Although, let's see, unfortunately, uh, it might be hard to recover the problem because we kept writing down more numbers in there. But anyway, it's important to, to, to keep doing these types of problems until a, a thought process that we're going through makes sense. OK, let's see what we can figure out here. skiers per second go through here, so 15 skiers per second can go up the, the ski lift. Good. And we know that C and E are both 10 amps each. Good. If there's 10 skiers per second going through here, there must be 10 skiers per second coming up from behind and getting out of the way in front. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that these points are all in series, so they have the same current. Good. And we know that D has Because we know that we have a 20 volt source here, so the drops have to add up to 20. 2 plus 7 is 9, 10, 20. Yeah, so now the total voltage drops equals the total voltage source. Good.
both A and B are each finite. See, there's 20, 15 amps coming from the battery. If 10, 15 skiers per second come off and 10 skiers per second go down this path, that leaves five skiers per second for this path. Good. And then they come back together down here to form 15 skiers per second again. Good? Mm -hmm. Can we figure out anything else? Um, no. Any more definite numbers? No, not anything definite, but the sum, the vol sum of the voltages A and B has to be equal to 10 volts. Great. See, is that right? So yeah, because this plus these two have to add up to 20. Excellent. So this is as far as we can get so far. 